News 46 is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, specializing in comprehensive accident rehabilitation. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Pahrump's number one media source for local news, weather, and sports. Good evening. It's Thursday, February 17th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale for News 46. The Knight County Sheriff's Office previously released information about an incident which occurred on February 11th where three male individuals were involved in an attack upon a vehicle which was traveling on Highway 372 near Red Butte Street. One of the suspected suspects allegedly threw a large rock into the path of the oncoming vehicle which struck and penetrated the vehicle's windshield. A 20-year-old passenger was severely injured and transported by Mercy Air to University Medical Center in Las Vegas. She was listed in critical condition. The victim is identified as Stacy Ann Johnson of Pahrump. Two of the suspects, Timothy Hanahan and Kevin Hanna, were located and arrested by the Nye County Sheriff's Office. The third suspect, David Neal Taylor, is still at large. Detectives are following up on several leads and are asking for help from anyone who knows the whereabouts of David Taylor. Anyone with information pertaining to this case are urged to contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000 or by emailing ncso underscore detectives at co.ny.nv.us. Attention, Detective Mike Eisenlawful. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is also attempting to identify a woman carrying false identification. News 46 has more. The Nye County Sheriff's Office has issued a press release. They need the public's help in attempting to identify this woman. This woman was arrested and booked into the Nye County Detention Center by Nevada Highway Patrol. During this arrest, this woman used someone else's identification and was booked under that information. Subsequently, it was determined that the female was not the individual who she purported to be when she was arrested. A prompt justice court judge has issued an order for her to be identified, located, and arrested to stand trial for the charges she was originally arrested on. Anyone with information to whom this individual is and her whereabouts is asked to contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Well, there's been some confusion over the recent child neglect charges held against the Broadhead family. Deanna O'Donnell has that story. According to the Child Protective Services website regarding fatality disclosures to the public, no record exists regarding neglect on the part of Sharon or Anthony Broadhead, the parents of the three children who passed away as a result of the structure fire last week. The report released Tuesday says the agency provided no services nor made any referrals to family members before the deaths. The Broadheads have now accepted grief counseling by the agency in which they will assess the family, including the health and safety of the two remaining girls, ages 10 and 14. Sharon Broadhead, though arrested Saturday, still has not been formally charged in this case on the four counts of involuntary manslaughter and three counts of child abuse and neglect. District Attorney Brian Kunze has said that he intends upon waiting for all relevant reports before he makes a decision about whether or not to file charges. According to the Las Vegas Review-Journal, Sheriff Tony DeMeo stated that his officers had enough information to book Sharon Broadhead on these charges without a final cause, which is believed to be from one of the children. The next court date for Sharon Broadhead has been set for March 28th. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. All right, we'll have much more local news right after this short break. Please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, specializing in comprehensive accident rehabilitation. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Welcome back to News 46. The auditorium of Pahrump Valley High School was packed with proud parents, friends, and relatives of 14 Nye County Sheriff's Office recruits. Deanna O'Donnell spoke with Sheriff Tony DeMeo about the event. This is the uh, graduating class uh, 01P2010. They started uh, last year. Uh, they just finished up seven months of the academy training. Uh, uh, half the class uh, are going to be members of Nye County Sheriff's Office. We have six full-time members. 
Uh, one is going to be a reserve for us. He's, uh, he went through the, uh, the thousand, thousand Hour Plus Academy, uh, and the, uh, he's waiting to be uh, hired on with another agency, or maybe with Nye County. And then the others, of course, are uh, none affiliates. Uh, they were here um, at the request of CSN, the uh, College of Southern Nevada, for us to train them for as peace officers, and uh, hopefully they'll be picked up by other police departments. Some of the actual deputies that we have there were deputies within the Nye County Sheriff's Office, but are being redistributed in different areas. No, uh, Deutsch was a uh, you know Ian's brother, uh, Richard Deutsch. He was a uh, he was in the uh, the jail. Uh, he came out of jail. He had to, actually you had to resign from the jail, and then you had to reapply for as a deputy sheriff. Uh, Adam Tibbetts did the same thing. He was a detention officer, a detention deputy up in uh, Tonopah. He wanted to go out in the street, and uh, he picked Tona, he picked Perump actually, to come down to Perump, and uh, he uh, he quit the he he resigned as a detention deputy, and then hired on as a as a deputy. Uh, for the so county. they're going to both go on the streets here in Pahrump. Yes, they're going to go out. The uh, seven uh, will go on the streets in Pahrump. The one uh, one reserve, since he went to a full academy, he'll, he'll actually be able to go out uh, full time on his, by himself. If they went to the, uh, the reserve class, they have to be uh, they have to go out and partner with a deputy because their academy class is like 200 hours. Uh, this academy class, to be a full time, full fledged uh, category one peace officer, is 480 hours by the state. But we more than double that hour, uh, that hours for uh, for our, uh, our deputies. I know that uh, we said that Richard was possibly going to replace his brother out there on the streets. Is he looking to become a canine deputy? Uh, he, I don't know what his. Uh, well, he has to get through the first year of uh, you know uh, has to get through his uh, probationary period. Uh, Ian uh, did not uh, finish his pr probationary period. We look for a canine deputy, and Ian shows, uh, you know, such promise within the County Sheriff's Office. I made him a canine deputy uh, with only eight months uh, within the County Sheriff's Office. And, you know, uh, Richard, uh, we call him Jay, uh, has his head on his shoulders. Uh, he also uh, was in a wild, is in a wild stallion, uh, you know, uh, Na National Guard unit. He's always brother in Afghanistan. He's still a member of the, uh, of the uh, National Guard. Um, he has a good head on his shoulders, and uh, you know, like uh, anybody else, so, uh, you're only limited um, by yourself as to how far you want to go into a policing agency. I think they're going to do fine. Every one of them has a lot of potential, um, not only serving the people well, but actually uh, what we hope everybody does is uh, start looking to be upward mobile and make rank and, uh, you know, uh, and lead. You know, uh, we need leaders uh, in, in this time, and we hope that every one of those individuals uh, look to be uh, future leaders in our county sheriff's office. And those that are not affiliated with us, but uh, do come on to the police department, go on to the police agencies, policing agencies, do the same thing. Um, you know, we're in, you know, we need leaders out there. Staff Sergeant Harry Hensler proudly served his country in the United States Air Force, and colleagues were proud to place a plaque honoring him on the wall this weekend in a ceremony at the Pahrump Veterans Memorial. Let's Harry is a, as a staff sergeant in the United States Air Force. He served in, uh, in Vietnam. He's a Vietnam veteran. Um, he was a medic with, uh, with the Air Force. And uh, this man would always volunteer to go and pick up our wounded soldiers and uh, uh, military men, and etc. And uh, he would actually volunteer to go do that. And uh, uh, Harry saved a lot of lives. And tell you a lot of lives. When did Harry pass away? He passed away in uh, on um, April twenty fourth. April twenty fourth, two thousand ten, and uh, we we're trying to get everything done in a whole bit, but we had a little difficulty, so we we got it all squared away, and now is the time to do it. And now we're at a memorial service for him. What's going to happen today? Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have our opening uh, uh, prayer our Pledge of Allegiance, then we're going to have comments from friends and relatives, and then we're going to have uh, the uh, placing of the dog tag on our statue, and then we're going to have the flag folding ceremony, and then uh, taps will, will go after that, and after that we'll have our, uh, our closing prayer uh, by uh, our chaplain, Al Jones. And tell me about what this honor means to do this to Harry Hensel, to um, memorialize him like this. It's, a, it's an honor to us. It's an honor to us to, because a lot of us, when we came back from Vietnam, as you recall, we had a rough time here in the United States of America. And uh, right now, 
almost all Vietnam veterans are brothers, and these are my brothers here, and uh, we stick together and everything. And we just wanted to to be the the brother that sent him off to uh, to the world, which is heaven. What you guys have been through, you can't describe, and it has bonded you for life, hasn't it? That's true. Uh, we we're uh, we're very very close, and we do anything for each other. Coming up after the break, a local musician performs for the Nevada Country Music Association, and we've got your tax tip of the week. All this and more coming up right after this short break. Please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, specializing in comprehensive accident rehabilitation. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Welcome back to News 46. Rick Scanlon spoke with Dan O'Donnell at Stage Stop Casino regarding his plans for the future and his recent public performance at the Nevada Country Music Association's Valentine's Day party held last Sunday. Today we're having a uh, Valentine's Day party and all of the food is brought in uh, as potluck uh, from members of the CMA and, and their friends. Uh, everybody is welcome to come down here and then we're going to have uh, a little uh, music with County Line. Wonderful. This is the last public performance at County Line? It's the last public performance that's scheduled right now. Who knows, something could change, but for right now it's the last one. Um, I'll be leaving uh, the town of Pahrump on June 1st, so uh, unless we get anything between now and then, this is the last one. So why are you leaving, I have to ask? More opportunities in other places. Um, just, uh, I'm going to semi-retire, uh, try to find myself a, a new place where I can write music, play music, and, and do it in the sun. I'm sure they're going to miss you here. Who's going to be taking over for the presidency? That I don't know. We actually have uh, another position open too. The vice presidency is open and the presidency will be open here uh, sometime after uh, Tuesday night and because uh, I'll be resigning and getting ready for my move. But uh, any one of the board members could step up to any one of the positions and uh, any member of the board uh, or member of the, of the club can step up as well and, and run. Diane, you're an alternate board member? Yes, I've been involved with the country music and the music, county line, Rick Scanlon, and line dancing as long as I've been in Perum. So are you looking uh, to move up in the ranks there? My only reason I'm not looking to move up in the ranks is because I'm going three months in the summer. I'm a snowbird. Otherwise, I would, but I do want to stay on the board. So tell people how they can join the um, Nevada Country Music Association. Um, basically, you know, you can pick up a newsletter at uh, Guitar West or uh, contact uh, Marion um, or come down here today and she'll explain everything to you, what we do, what our goals are, what we're trying to do. It's only $25 a year. I'm, I, you know, I think that every musician who wants to perform in this town should be a member so that they're promoting themselves along with their colleagues all the time. And here's Kay from Jackson Hewitt Tax Services with your Tax Tip of the Week. Tax Tip of the Week is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt Tax Services. Hi, it's Kay with this week's Jackson Hewitt Tax Tip. Don't forget, as of February 15th, you can file those itemized returns. We know that Congress was a little late passing those tax cut bills this year, but as of February 15th, you can file those itemized returns so you're able to mail them or electronically send them. Hope this helps. This is Kay with this week's Jackson Hewitt Tax Tip. Tax Tip of the Week is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt Tax Services. All right, so to paraphrase everyone's favorite plush bear, it's been a blustery day, and it looks like the blustery days aren't going anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We've got your seven-day forecast coming up right after the short break. Please keep it here.
News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. Today it was cloudy out there with a high of 57 degrees. Winds were coming out of the south southwest up to 17 miles per hour with gusts upwards of 24 miles per hour. Very windy out there. High profile vehicles need to beware as the winds are going to continue throughout the seven day forecast. Now our pressures dropped just a little bit. 29.97 sunrise was at 629 AM and our record high 83 degrees back in 1977. Now for tonight, it's going to be clear out there pretty much kind of partly cloudy. They're saying with a low of 34 degrees. Now it's pretty chilly, but not below freezing, so we're still OK on the five piece. Now winds are coming out of the south southeast at 11 miles per hour and our gusts are coming at about 10 miles per hour. Now I know it sounds counterintuitive, but uh, add 10 miles per hour to the 11 miles per hour. So it's actually coming in at like 21 miles per hour. So pretty breezy out there. You still want to be careful when you're driving around. Especially in high profile vehicles, you're going to get tipped over if you're trying to go too fast or if you're not very careful. Now our sunset was at 527 PM and our record low was 70 degrees back in 1960. Now looking at our seven day forecast, this is not a typo and I'm not playing a practical joke. We've got winds all week long. Take a look at it tomorrow, Friday, 20% chance of rain, very windy gusts up to 32 miles per hour. Our high is going to be 62 degrees and our low will be 37. Now Saturday, the weekend this is our first bad weekend in over a month with 70% chance of rain. If you own an umbrella, you're going to want to carry it with you. You're going to get wet. Gusty winds up to 31 miles per hour with a high of 53 degrees and a low of 33, still just above freezing. So at least we don't have to worry about our pipes that day. Now Sunday, it looks like it's not going to be windy, but it's going to be a little windy, just not quite enough to make our mark here. Probably about 12 miles per hour, roughly. Now we got a 30% chance of rain that day with a high of 52 and a low of 31. Now moving into next week, the wind's going to continue all week long. We've got Monday, windy gusts up to 22 miles per hour, high of 55 degrees, a low of 32. Tuesday, not much change in there. It's just cloudier with gusts up to 36 miles per hour, high of 57 and a low of 33. Wednesday, still windy. It's not going anywhere. High gusts of 29 miles per hour, high of 59 and a low of 30. That is below freezing. That looks like the only, well, it looks like the start of the only, where well, we're going to have to start watching out for the five P's of Pahrump. Your pets, your pumps, your plants, your pipes, your pools. Now, as you know, all of those things are susceptible to freezing. You're going to want to watch out for all of them, especially in the later part of the seven day forecast. Now, Thursday, 20% chance of rain coming back in again. It looks like we're going to get another bout with rain in the next seven or eight days. Now, winds are going to be gusty yet again. 38 mile per hour gusts with a high of 57 and a low of 25. And a pair of birthdays are being celebrated here in the Valley this weekend. Let's have a look. Uh, see, in my office, I have communication devices. I have to listen to my iPod, and then I got to listen to my new phone that works, and then my computer, and all these electronics, just to make my life simpler so I can figure out whose birthday it is and whose birthday it's not. So let's take a look. Um, Darby. It looks like Darby is 18 years old today, and she's got a brand new car out there. Her mom bought her a. <laughs> <clears throat> a brand new Toyota Ni Nitro, and uh, uh, or not Nitro, Neon, I'm sorry. Um, it's green with uh, red feathers, and I hope that you have a happy birthday because without you, what would we do? Happy birthday, Darby. Oh, and uh, uh, John Lennon, uh, I understand it's your birthday as well, so uh, happy birthday to you too. Hi Lennon, hi Darby, I want to wish you both a happy birthday and I know your birthday is not on the same day, but uh, we really love both of you and very, very, very happy birthday. Happy birthday Lennon, Darby. Hey, happy birthday to you both. And guess what? I'll be seeing you Saturday. Love you too. Happy birthday Lennon, Darby. Darby and Lennon, happy birthday and many, many more and have a great time. Happy birthday, Lennon and Darby. You guys are awesome. I'll see you at Wolfie's on Saturday. Happy birthday to my kids, Lennon and Darby. Happy birthday, Lennon. I know it's your 18th. It's a special day, but you're still my baby and the best kid ever. And Darby, happy 15th birthday. I wish you the very best. You're the sweetest kid, too. And I'm a little bit biased. And a very happy collective birthday celebration to both of them. 
Now, due to inclement weather, the Pahrump Valley Speedway has decided to cancel all races scheduled for this weekend. Also, a viewing is being held for Crystal Smiley tonight at 6 p.m. at the Pahrump Family Mortuary. And her funeral will be held tomorrow at the Pahrump Community Church at 2 p.m. McDonald's will also be holding a fundraiser this weekend to benefit the families of the fire victims. And with that said, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale, and from everyone up here on the Hill of KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Prump.